Okay, yes, let me come around that side. Hi, friends. Today we're on page 76, and we have two new body systems that we are learning about. Um, hang on. Oh, the people in the room are trying to pronounce one of them, and they are murdering it. Excretory. All right, page 76. What are, oh, this chair is so low. I hate this chair, hang on. I keep feeling like I'm falling down. And I'm ripping that course. Okay, here we go. The digestive system. Digestive system, that is going to be one of our vocab words. Digestive system. Is a long tube in which food is broken down into the nutrients an organism can use. So we need to write that down. Digestive system, long tube in which food is broken down into nutrients. Um, let's see. For you guys, we will, where are we going to present a window? Digestive. Kaylee, we're on page 76. And we're writing down a vocabulary word. If I can get my keyboard set up over here on this side. Digestive system. Long to, oops, can't type. Tube in which food is broken down into nutrients and I'm going to project it an organism can use there we go ah there okay so I guess I'm going to have to sit this way I'm just sit facing nobody today. I have my back to the room and teach so I can see the board. That's terrible. Okay. Um, all right. So what all makes up our digestive system? Um, we were going to find out when a rabbit, and I don't know why it's just stuck on a rabbit, but a rabbit is a mammal similar to us. But this applies to not only rabbits, but every mammal. Okay. A digestive system, when a rabbit eats a carrot, its teeth grind the carrot. At the same time, the rabbit's saliva starts the chemical breakdown of the carrot. So you know all that like stuff in your mouth, your saliva, like juicy stuff in your mouth. It just you always have it, right? Okay, page seventy-six, Kaylee. Um, yeah, Bills. I didn't write down skeletal and muscular the other day. Can I go ahead and write it? Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so your digestive system actually starts from the moment the food enters your mouth. So it starts with your teeth, your saliva, your tongue, all of that. You need that to chew Ew. and swallow your food. Ew. It is what it is. Everybody's got to eat. Okay, from the mouth, the chewed pieces of carrot travel through a muscular tube called the esophagus. And so that actually goes down your neck all the way down the smooth muscles in the esophagus contract and expand and they squeeze your food down to the stomach so your esophagus is the so sometimes you swallow your food wrong and you say it went down the wrong pipe because you you know that there, there's there's more than one. There's your esophagus yeah. because one has your air that you're breathing yeah. that goes to your lungs. One so one of them takes your air to your lungs, and one of them is your esophagus that's taking food to your stomach. So do you take food to your lungs? You don't take. That's what. That's how we make sure that the food isn't going to your lungs. Your air that you're breathing doesn't go in your esophagus. Okay. 
those are your lungs. Like, so you have bronchial passageways that take it from your mouth and nose. Your mouth and your nose are connected way back yeah, in the crazy. back. Have you ever like that's snorted like, and like snotted food up your nose before or know. milk or something? Oh, like yeah. you can snot milk I out try, your I nose. Try, it's hurt, it hurts. It burns. Um, but sometimes if you cough or laugh, sometimes when you have a liquid in your mouth, it like comes out your nose. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're all connected. There's like a little opening in the back of your mouth. Um, or like if you have like a really snotty nose and you have like sinus drainage, it makes your throat hurt because your snot's running down the back of your throat. So it's all connected in there, right? Okay, but so esophagus goes from your mouth, your throat, all the way down to your stomach. Your stomach, okay? And it squeezes. It has muscles in it. And kind of like how, you know, like when you get towards the end of the tube of toothpaste and you have to kind of squeeze it from the bottom and work it towards the top of the toothpaste tube. That's kind of how this muscle is. It starts at the top and it's just squeezing in order to squish all of the food all the way down to your stomach. Does that make sense? So it's kind of like this ripple effect where it's squeezing all the way down to your stomach to get the food down there. Zeke, your hand is raised. Oh, yeah. I'm going to sign this. I'm going to sign a in my mouth. I mean, in my nose. Okay, just because we all had to deal with what Zeke just said, I want to make sure that you guys heard what Zeke just said. And he said that one time, just to prove that um, everything's connected in there, he had like a boogie in his nose, and he like s s sucked it in really hard, but um, it came into his mouth. It sucked that all the way through into his mouth. Um, so that makes me want to puke a little bit. I think I just threw up in my mask a little bit. Um, thank you for sharing, Zeke. I really like that you were able to make a self-to-text connection today. Thank you. He has more. Get ready. He has more, guys. I need to move this camera. Here's, like, this stuff, and it's, like, it's like acid. Hang on, we're going to get there. We're in the digestive system. I'm going to get there. Don't get ahead of me. Okay, so we get to the stomach. Okay, the smooth muscles in the esophagus contract and expand, which means they're squeezing the food all the way down to the stomach. The stomach holds partially digested food. Okay, strong acids in the stomach help break down food, such as the carrot. So it said in the very beginning, our saliva helps break down the food. So as it's going down our esophagus, we've got saliva from our mouth mixed with the food. Okay. So let's just say yesterday for lunch was tater tot casserole. I tried it. It was only meh. They told me it was going to be good. It was eh at best. Anyways, tater tot casserole, squeezing it down. So as it is being squeezed down, the saliva, the chemicals in the saliva are starting to break apart the tater tot casserole into different nutrients. Things that can be used by my body and things that cannot. Things that are healthy, things that are not. Maybe there was some sugar in it. I can use a little bit of that sugar, but maybe not all of it. Maybe there was some, like food has different things like potassium, calcium, proteins. And so it starts breaking those things apart. And it's going down the esophagus and the saliva is working with it. And when it gets to the stomach, there's even stronger stomach acids in there that are going to continue to break things down. So it doesn't start to look like food anymore. So if I were to, um, if a surgeon, not me, surgeon were to look inside your stomach, would he see actual tater tots in there? No. No, because by the time it sits in your stomach for a little bit, it's kind of like dissolving and breaking down and it's not looking like what it used to. I don't see pieces of lettuce or a slice of tomato hanging out in your tummy next to a tater tot or an onion ring. Um, everything starts to look like this mushy, nasty stuff right in there. It is what it is. It looks like the. But your body is using that, then at that point, then it can be absorbed by your body and those nutrients can be absorbed, okay? So here's what's going to happen it's in my stomach and it's partially digested by these strong stomach acids. Now, let me stop there. Have any of you ever had heartburn? Like yes. where your chest kind of hurts after you yes. eat something yes. that's really like strong. Like if you eat oranges or grapefruits or like citrus stuff, spaghetti, like the ass, like the spaghetti sauce, chili, those are very acidic foods. And so if you eat acidic foods and you already have the acids in your tummy, acidic foods make your body extra acidic. And so then you that's when you get that like heartburn. And sometimes you have to either like drink milk or take those like chewy little Tums, Rolaids tablets or whatever. Yeah. 
Um, so that's what causes that because you already have acid in your body. So then if you eat acidic food, it makes the balance in your body out of whack. And so that's when you get that heartburn. It's not actually your heart burning. It's actually the acids from your that's stomach sick. that are like basically like boiling and coming back up your esophagus a little bit. Oh, I have a story to go to that. Science! You guys are like, ew, and I'm like, it's so cool. Oh, yeah. I uh, it's so like cool how our body works. Okay, um, Maggie. So, last time I woke my dad up, uh, like, I didn't know I had a heartburn. I told my dad, like, how I was feeling. He said, you have heartburn. I said, my, I'm dying. My heart is burning. He said, no. Yeah, so Maggie had heartburn once, and the first time she had it, she didn't know what she was feeling, just that something hurt. And as her dad was explaining it, she was thinking, like, she took it literally like her heart was actually burning. No, it's not. They call it heartburn because it's about, if you feel it about where your heart is in your chest, but it's actually your esophagus that's burning. Um, and, it, yeah, they should actually call it esophagus burn, but it is not what they call it. They call it heartburn. Um but it's actually your esophagus because it's the acids from your stomach kind of bubbling up um, because there's you ate acidic food and you already have acid in your stomach. So there's just too much for your body to handle and it takes Gross. it a while to pro. And so it just kind of bubbles up and it sits there while your body works on breaking it down and getting and turning it into non acidic. Know, things. Yeah. Riley. Um, so when your food dissolves, is that what comes up when you puke? Ew. So Mag uh, Riley said, your dissolved food, is that what comes up when you puke? And the answer is yes. Oh. When you puke, it's the That's contents of your stomach, stomach, your partially yeah. digested food. Good question. Gross question, but good question. Um, Josie. So, um, I've heard that, I don't know if it's a myth or not, but how long does gum sit in your stomach? Because it doesn't have any nutrients or anything. It's not 10 years or whatever your parents tell you. I can tell you that. Um, it's not I that. knew it was that, but. I feel like there's a Mythbusters that does deal with this, um, but I don't know the actual answer, but it's not like, like people will be like forever or whatever. And people will say, if you eat a watermelon seed, like you'll grow a watermelon. No, none of that kind of thing is true. Um, Lily. So my mom said that she had a milk is good for her friends. Why is it good for her? Why is milk, okay, so Lily says, her mom says milk is good when you have heartburn, and it is. And also like those like Rolaids or Tums chewables your parents may give you if you have heartburn. Why are those things good for heartburn? Okay, we're gonna learn about this a little more, a lot more when we get to actually the end of the year, fourth quarter, the very last quarter of school. We're gonna do a unit called Chemical Magic. Oh. And it's the best one, okay? But we're going to learn about this. So, like, foods are classified as acids, or the opposite of an acid is a base. And milk is a base. So it's, like, the opposite of an acid. So it's, like, something that's really soothing and calming, and it helps kind of, like, neutralize the acid and the burning. So, and same thing, same kind of ingredients, calcium is the base. And so those, like, chewable, like, roll aids or tums or whatever, they're just two different brands of the same medicine. Um, they're like chewable calcium, like it has the same kind of things that milk have in them. So it helps kind of neutralize those acids. Some people have like really, really, really bad heartburn and have to take like prescription medicine from them. But ultimately, they're just a stronger version of a base because a base is the opposite of an acid and it neutralizes it. Well, then why don't you just always take the stronger one? Some people know for a fact before they even start eating, I know this food is going to get me heartburn. And so they start, they like it eat a Rolaid and then they have their chili or they take their prescription medicine because some of them can prepare your stomach ahead of time kind of like how we practiced our exercising yesterday and our body got more efficient there are medicines you can take before if you have a problem with heartburn people will take medicines prior to eating oranges or whatever acidic food and then they know I can still eat the yummy food and that medicine will be help their body prepare Sophie would a heartburn be the same to um old people to like it Does it hurt worse if you're old? No, I don't think so. No. Well, no. Your body might not be as efficient at processing it, so it might last longer, but I don't think it hurts worse. Um, okay. Fiona. Um, my question is, is like if you eat something like a month before, is it possible that you could still, like if you get a stomach bug like a month after you eat like something, um, is it possible that um, you could puke it back up 
and it would still you no your food does not stay in your stomach for that long oh, I hope so. no um usually i i think some things take longer to digest and break down but for the most part things don't stay in your stomach more than like a day or two some people's bodies process faster than others um but most normal healthy kids and adults i think like 24 48 hours and things are all the way through your system in your mouth and out uh, out the other end okay all right i'm gonna move on you wait. zeke gets mad when i don't call him okay okay um so one thing is isn't it cool that you can like you why do you like, like corn, I, corn, isn't corn supposed to be really healthy? He says, isn't corn supposed to be healthy, but. Like, you, you just poop out the Okay. No, and, and, so, and this is a little graphic. He says, but you just poop out the whole kernel. Like, you can see the whole kernel. Of your poop. True story. That's nasty. It's nasty, but also true. Your body can't process the outside part, but the inside part of it, the skin of the corn kernel. Is what's coming out of you your body doesn't break that down the acid That's doesn't awesome. burn that up but the nutrients that are inside of the kernel corn aren't there anymore they get used lily oh, yeah. is like la 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 no. la la um okay no 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 please this is like a question okay my brother has to take medicine for acid reflux yes so what is acid reflux acid reflux is like chronic bad heartburn oh, I so zeke said his brother's taking medicine for acid reflux and so and you might have somebody in your family that's actually a pretty common occurrence that people have something called acid reflux and that just means you have chronic or like recurring like every time you eat you get re uh heartburn every time it doesn't matter what you eat you always get heartburn no, so the acid reflux medicine like just is like constantly calming your stomach acid so they're not overreacting like he just has like a really overreactive a really strong stomach acid. <laughs> I don't know what that is about, but no, I'm not. Yeah, this job. So it happens while you sleep. So that's why I was like, oh, it happens when you sleep. Okay, so think about this. If I'm standing up, things in my stomach have to come straight up, right? No. But if I'm laying down, they just, like, they just kind of flow naturally because gravity isn't helping them. So, yes, reflux for some people and heartburn is worse in the evenings because your body's laying down, so it's easier for those stomach acids to come up into your esophagus. That makes total sense. Lily. Um, when I was a baby, I reflexed in the back, and um, that's what else I was doing. Okay, Lily had reflux when she was a baby. Lots of babies have reflux. That's actually a common baby thing, because uh, their bodies, their little esophaguses are so small, there's not a big section for like, um, yeah, it doesn't take much for the stomach acids to come back up. And they have such tiny little tummies, almost nothing fits in them. So, and you especially, like the teeniest little, little, little thing ever. She probably had a stomach like this big and an probably. esophagus this big. Um, um, so, all right, I have to keep reading or we're never going to get through this today, guys. I love all these questions. In this I was going to say, uh, Cameron has a really good question. Oh, Cam, what's your question? Um, So, this may be a little bit gross, but... Does this mean that whenever you're like constipated and you can't go to the bathroom, does that mean that um you have like you don't have enough nutrients from your food? Not yet. We are um that's a good question, Cam. We aren't to that part of the digestive system yet that causes the constipation part. That's not so, like too much cheese is on there. Okay, <laughs> certain foods cause so there are certain foods, just like there are certain foods that cause heartburn and reflux, uh -huh. there are certain foods that cause constipation. So let's keep reading about the next step, what happens after your stomach. Okay, so the stomach empties its partially digested contents into the rabbit's coiled small intestine. Digestive juices produced by the liver and pancreas combine with the food in the small intestine. These chemicals break down sugar, protein, and fats into nutrients, and the nutrients are then absorbed in the small intestine. So if you look at the picture of the bunny at the bottom, you see what looks like a string or a rope going like up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. That's your intestines, okay? And so that is this big, big tube and it all goes back and back and forth. If you took your intestines out of your body, I think, I don't remember, it's like a really long, 
like a mile long yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Like ridiculous. Um, but so that it fits in your belly, it's all like wadded up and coiled up, and your food is just constantly like yeah. going around and around in your intestines. And while it's in there, all of those different things in your the digestive juices is what I call them continue to break down those foods into all the different parts you need. So it breaks it down into the protein, the fat, the sugar, and then it takes it to the parts of the body that need that, okay? Um, tiny folds in the small intestine touch tiny blood vessels that deliver the nutrients to the blood. And during digestion, there is always some undigested food, like the corn kernels. The large intestine reabsorbs water from the undigested food. And the remaining solid waste is processed in the large intestine and leaves through the second opening in the digestive system. In, out. I don't know what else to say about that, but um, we've all got an out part, so there's that. And um, that's where the undigested stuff comes out. And sometimes we can still tell what it is. Corn kernels, sometimes you can see peas. Uh, the pea shells. Like. Why do you guys look at your poop? Um, anyway, now, back to Cam's question. Now, and then some of it is just like it's dissolved food and you can't tell what it is and that's what else you see. Okay. Now, back to Cam's question. Back, hang on. Back to Cam's question. So your intestines squeeze the food through. They're a muscle. And as they're digesting the food, they are squeezing the food through just like your esophagus, kind of like in order. And if the food is especially like dense or heavy, the muscles have to work harder to push them through. Or if you overeat and you eat a ton of stuff, then it's like a thick amount of food and it doesn't want to fit through that small tube. Okay, so your muscles have to work harder to squeeze the food through and when your muscles have to work that much harder to squeeze it through it takes longer okay and so that's what causes the constipation if does that make yes. sense guys so yeah your intestines are squeezing the food through but and yeah, certain foods cheese. certain foods are prone to doing that a lot of dairy foods cheeses and I too much it. like milk um will cause you to be constipated because those things are heavier and they um, they just take longer to digest and the, a lot of it doesn't break down and so it just takes longer and your muscles have to work that much harder to get it out because it's heavier denser food that doesn't break down as easily so it takes it longer um, it takes more of those acids and digestive juices to break them down um, so does that answer your question cam yes thank you you're welcome. Okay. Hey, is there, hey what? Isn't there a um, magic, shouldn't there be a magic school bus about this or something? Shouldn't there be a magic school bus about this? I believe so. Um, all right. In fact, there is. There, there is. I saw it. We're totally in the poop. Yeah. Um, watched it. Yeah, they, yeah, they're in the poop. I don't um, want to watch that. I want to watch it. I want to watch it. I want to watch it. Me too. Okay, I'm continuing to read. Undigested food is not the only waste that the rabbit's body needs to remove. The excretory system, vocabulary word, removes waste products from the body. Excretory system. Sorry, I've been like presenting this whole time. You guys didn't necessarily need to look, whatever. Okay, let's see here. Text. Text box. X. Oops. I can't spell Kertori system removes waste from the body. All right, that one's pretty easy. Okay. Now, so it's not just that the intestines push it out. Um, there's a whole system that's doing things to get this done. Okay. So excretory system removes waste products from the body. The rabbit removes excess water, salt, and other waste through its skin in the form of sweat. What do we lose Same thing. Like, our body does the same thing as this rabbit. So when you sweat, have you ever been, like, running or playing in the summer when it's a hot, sweaty, and you get sweaty? And have you ever, like, like, you're sweating so much and you get some in your mouth or whatever? It like, like salt. 
It's, 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 it's salty tasting, right? Oh, yeah, that's why there's sweating. Uh, is good wait, for you. I'm, sweating uh, is good for you. You are getting extra stuff out of your body that you don't need. Salt, your body needs salt, but it doesn't need a lot. But everything we eat, everything we eat has salt in it. And so it's something that we can very easily get too much of in our body. And to help us get rid of it, we either um, can sweat it out. And so, yes, your sweat all, pretty much always, as long as your body's doing what it's supposed to do, your sweat is salty. Okay? Because that's one of the ways that we remove excess salt from our body. Um, Sean. Um, so, when we're doing our mold experiment, I put salt on my bread, and it's like having liquid come out of it. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what my salty bread did. All right, so they were saying when we did the mold thing, they put salt on it and it started like getting liquidy. Um, interesting. I don't know about that. Okay, Zico. Okay, so I have, I have some. So, you know how dogs lick their skin? Dogs lick their skin? No, dogs lick our skin. Dogs lick our skin, okay. Yeah, it's because there's salt in it. Like, it, that's why. And then another thing is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay, hang on, let me paraphrase. Okay, he said dogs are licking our skin because our skin is salty. True story. So even when it's not the middle of the summer and you're playing on a hot day, your skin is still like you're not getting like wet with it like you would, but you are still excreting, which means it's like removing waste from your body. Like constantly through tiny little openings called pores. Um, that you can't see, they're too tiny for you to see on these little pores, microscopic little holes in your skin, and you're excreting salt and other wastes, um, liquid wastes, okay? Um, all right, Josie, hand raised. I think I forgot my question. I'm sorry, if you remember, it, you're going to get it. Okay, okay. Um, so in the form of sweat, Cells also create wastes, including carbon dioxide and nitrogen-containing wastes. Carbon dioxide. I remember. So as you remember, go ahead. Okay. So, why do um your parents always tell you to eat healthy if it's your body is just going to turn it into nutrients? Well, because some food, some foods don't have nutrients. Some foods are like only like if I were to eat a Jolly Rancher. It's sugar and some other stuff that my body doesn't know how to process. So I'm not getting any real nutritional value from that because I'm already getting, there are healthy sugars and there are processed sugars. Okay. So Jolly Ranchers, Little Debbie Snack Cakes, those kind of things are full of processed sugars like made in a factory. They're not real. Okay. Your body has a hard time processing the not real stuff. Um, same thing. And mashed potatoes, there's that's not um, that's not real food. I mean it is you can eat it, but it's not like a real potato. It never was a real potato. It was a chemically made potato in a factory. Um, and so those things it takes your body, it's harder for your body to process and there's not as much nutrients that are good for you in it. It does still have nutrients in it, but it's not the same. Eating a real potato or if you wanted to get sugars, there are sugars that occur naturally in pretty much every fruit and some vegetables. So you can get plenty of sugar. And your body is more efficient and knows how to process anything that's a natural food. So that's when you hear people talking about eating natural or eating clean or eating organic because your body is naturally better at eating and processing actual fruits and vegetables and um like meat, like real meat, like that you get from like the actual like meat counter. So not like when you buy a bag of chicken nuggets, that's like, that does have some real chicken in it, but it's not like, it's also got other stuff added into it. Okay. Um, and the, yeah, and it's like parts of a chicken that you wouldn't normally eat. It's got everything in it. You don't want to know what's in a hot dog either. Um, Everyone knows what a hot dog is. Just Google what's actually in a hot dog. I'm not going to spoil it for you. You might never eat a hot dog again. Don't do it right now. Uh, hot, dog. 
Hot dogs are still delicious, and chili dogs are even better. Our dogs good. I'm going to keep eating them. Um, but I'm just saying your body is more efficient. So that's, that was a good question. Your body is more efficient, Josie, at breaking down healthy, natural foods as opposed to processed foods. Um, yes. Okay, follow up, Josie. Okay, so this isn't really a question, but I have two things. One really quick thing. This is just a weird fact. Um, whenever you said mashed potatoes, whenever you see an ice cream commercial, it's not really ice cream. It's mashed potatoes. That's so Why? weird. To me. Why? It's Why because all of the bright lights, it would make the ice cream melt. Your story, if you didn't know that, ice cream commercials are always filming mashed potatoes. Yeah, because the ice cream would melt under the hot studio lights too fast for them to do it. What? So they, they make mashed potatoes. Okay. Second thing. Anyway, all right. Yeah, you put it away. All right, carrying on. The waste is carried in the blood from the liver to the kidneys. The liver, put your hands down. Everybody put your hands down. The toxin is a poisonous substance. Write down toxin. Toxin, poisonous substance. Toxin, poisonous substance. Zeke, put your hand down and write this down. Toxin is a poisonous substance. Okay. Um, some of our waste, if it stayed in our body for too long, would be, you heard the word toxic. Toxic is another word for poisonous. Okay, our body can't process that. It can't do anything with it. Um, if you eat things that you are not supposed to, like things you're not supposed to, like if I just walked over here and tried to eat a marker or a glue stick or a, a um, Tide Pod, right? Your body, those are not food items. Your body doesn't know what to do with that, and the chemicals that are in it are toxic or poisonous to our body. Our body sometimes can't get them out fast enough, and it harms our body and makes our, some of our systems shut down. Um, so that is why you don't eat things that aren't made to be food, um, really. That's why the little kids they make non-toxic stuff, just in case they eat it. Yes, that's why you see like markers that say non-toxic and crayons say non-toxic for little kids. They don't know any better, and so they put everything in their mouth. Like if you have a little brother or sister or another little cousin or something that's in your life, they put everything in their mouth, everything. If it's small enough, in the mouth every time and so yes you will a lot of times see even like plastic toys say non-toxic because they'll like put them in their mouth and slobber on them and whatever um and so that's so that they don't get all those extra chemicals or whatever in their body um okay great i was wondering because i just thought what happens if you what happens if i eat a peanut what will it do well okay so grace said for me what happens when i eat a peanut i know um that gray is highly allergic to peanuts um, well, sam's allergic to like straight up eggs if they're cooked in something he's fine but if i try to give him a plate of scrambled eggs that would also not fly right I'm right there okay um okay so peanuts for gray eggs for sam what is allergies your body i think if i'm correct on this is doesn't process that specific kind of food correctly like your body, for whatever reason, doesn't recognize that as a food, and like it has a reaction. It cause or it causes your body to like extra try and process it. So we'll have to. I'll have to actually do a little bit more research on what actually happens in your body when you are. In the food that you're like. I think based on like knowing your reaction is that your body like starts swelling over. I think your body doesn't know how to process it, and. And so it can it, and it like causes all of everything else to start like going wrong. Um, so yes. yeah, hang on, I've got to keep going, guys, or we're not going to get through this. Hang on, if we have time at the end, we'll go through the rest of your questions. Okay, so the kidneys are the part of your body that filter waste from your blood. Um, liver and kidney help break down the toxic stuff to help get rid of them. The kidneys remove waste from the blood using millions of tiny filters called nephrons. Nephrons separate waste from useful materials in the blood. Nephrons have membranes with very small openings that allow some substances to pass through and not others. They send useful substances back into the blood and then they collect the waste. So think about this. So 
Um, how many of your families um, drink coffee? Oh, my dad like, every morning. Mom does. Coffee, okay. And at this point, probably most of you have those little like cake cup things. How many of you either bef like long ago or still currently, your family does the old fashioned coffee where they put the grounds and the little yes. coffee filter and everything, yes. right? So even if your family doesn't do it, like you've seen that before though, yes. right? Like, you know, you put a coffee filter in there and then you dump up the coffee grounds in it. So when you drink a cup of coffee, then like, and that's how I do it. I make it like the old fashioned way with like the actual grounds and a coffee filter or whatever. So when I'm drinking my cup of coffee every morning, there's not like those coffee grounds that are in it. The coffee grounds stay inside that coffee filter like that the particles do and the hot water that sits on it like sucks the flavor out and the flavor is going through the filter and the water is going through the filter but the actual like pe little pieces of coffee which is really just ground up coffee beans coffee's originally a bean um and so it's ground up coffee beans so those little pieces of beans aren't actually in my coffee mug they are stuck in that coffee filter still in my coffee pot and then all of the nutrients, there are a few nutrients, small amount what in coffee. Cocoa beans, um, cocoa bean, same thing. Um, okay. All right. So we're going to do an experiment on Tuesday. Um, and we're going to pretend to create these tiny little nephrons or the tiny filters. Um, Josie, raise your hand. Okay, so, um, I, this is not really science-ish, well, it's kind of, yeah, okay, so, it's kind of a question, kind of a super gross fact, um, does anyone know what marshmallows and gummies are made out of? What? Yeah. What? Yeah, so, um, <laughs> And all the gross stuff from animals and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I still like them. But, um, does your body know how to process that? Because it still, like, comes from an animal, but it's, it's an not good for you and stuff. The term you're going for, Joe, is it's an organic material, meaning it occurs naturally in nature. It's not a chemical that was created in a factory or a lab. Um, bones or are considered organic material. They come from an organism. So we know organisms are all living things. And bones are organic material, meaning it's something that comes from a living thing. So in general, your body knows what to do with body parts and consuming body parts. And think about this. So like you wouldn't think about like if you eat a Nope, not going with taco. I'm going with KFC, okay? I've got a chicken leg, okay? Got my fried chicken. I got a chicken leg here. I'm not going to eat the chicken bone. Oh, no. No. However, some special factories and plants that make certain foods will take bones from certain animals and grind them up. And that is where you get gummies and marshmallows and things that have that kind of spongy textures, gummy bears, fruit snacks, fruit roll-ups, all of that gummy type stuff. Um, I'm totally going to continue to eat gummies. I love gummy fruit and gummy like flavors. Okay, haven't spoiled it. Um, but it does have ground up bone materials in it. Inside of your bones, you think about a bone and you think of it as like this really hard thing, but the inside of your bone is actually kind of spongy and soft. Yeah. It's called marrow. Yeah, marrow. Bone marrow is what is inside and it's actually kind of spongy and soft. And that's that's the part that they are putting in the gummies and stuff because it gives it that soft, spongy kind of texture. Okay. Um, all right. Hang on. The kidneys produce urine Pee -pee. <laughs> from excess water and the collected wastes from the nephrons. Okay. Urine flows from the kidneys to the bladder. And once your bladder is full, the urethra carries urine from the bladder to the outside of the body. <laughs> Please 
I won't make you write down your reason. But guess what? You all have one. Yeah, we all. You all got one. Yeah, I know. I said you have to make. I write poops. I I got news for you. We all do it. Okay. Um. All right. And that is how it leaves the body. Through this teeny little tube inside you, and it comes out. I find this so interesting. Like I'm so geeked out about how the body works and everything. Hang on. There are parts of it that are kind of gross, right? Because we're kind of talking bathroom stuff, which is normally like a private thing that you don't talk about, right? But think about all of the different pieces from the time your food enters your mouth to the gross stuff, right? But think about all the little things that have to work together to make your, to power your body and get you all of the nutrients out of those food, get rid of all the parts that you don't need so that your body stays healthy. Like, our bodies are like an incredibly complex machine, basically, like natural machine. And I get pretty geeked out thinking about how it all works together. So this digestive system is bringing the food all the way down to your stomach and intestines. And then from your intestines, it goes through the kidneys, liver, and they filter everything out, and then it goes out of you. Okay, excretory system is when it starts filtering out all of the bad and helping it leave your body. Digestive process of nutrients, excretory, get rid of the bad. Okay. All right. There is a worksheet that goes with today. You guys only have 10 minutes, 15 minutes for it. You guys can take as long as you need. Fiona has a gross question. Let's go, Fiona. I love it. My question is like, if you eat a bunch of like different foods, and you know how most foods have like different colors, like peppers and stuff, like, like when you go to the, like when you go poo, how? <laughs> how is color it, sometimes? Yeah. How? Okay. Why? Is sometimes it, certain foods change the color. Okay. Also, also not only certain foods, but um, foods that have a lot of like dyes in them. So like, I make like a homemade cake and decorate it like for my kids' birthdays. Okay, that's just, I love to bake. I love to cook. Some of you already knew that about me. Um, and so every year, my kids' birthdays, like um, one year Lily had Rapunzel cake and I like made the cake and it looked like grass and Rapunzel was in the field and there was like her tower. Um, and it was, it was okay. Oh, my um, and like one year Landon had like a planes, like the Disney movie planes where they made the like, or, like I made the dusty orange. Disney plane okay. like, no, uh, last year when your twins were there, um, he had a hard train your dragon birthday. Oh, oh yes. Perfect example. Because I made a toothless cake. What color is toothless? Black, right? So it had a lot of black icing on the cake. Everybody's poop was straight black because we ate black. I see. I have to look at child's poop. I have to look at family's poop. Weirdo. My own children. Because Lily's still in a diaper. So there's that. Okay. Also, I ate the cake. Yeah. Oh. And and I poop too, just like you guys. <laughs> this is so weird. Okay. Am I blushing? All right. Also, one time Lily had a little mermaid pig that was very purple and blue and green. And um, there was blue. Blue and green poop. And that was scary because I forgot. And it took a couple of days. And then I'm like, why is there, what is happening? Um, yeah, I changed the diaper and I'm like, why is it green? What's happening? Um, yeah, it was a whole situation. Um, but yeah, so certain foods. Um, have natural pigments and dyes in them. And if you think about this, like back in like Native American times, they used certain foods and berries to help dye their fabrics and dye their clothes. Those same foods and berries can dye what's going on in your system. So depending on if you eat a ton of them, it can change you. It also, if you eat a ton of stuff, can make your skin start to change colors. If you yeah, eat, like once I eat so many sweet potatoes, my nose turns orange. If you eat, especially orange colored foods are really bad about it. eating too many sweet potatoes or too many carrots. When your body like starts, you start, you sweat it out. And so as your body like excretes it through the skin, it gives your skin that kind of orangey color. Um, um, yes. And so, yes, sometimes your parents will be like, if you eat more of that, you're going to turn into one. 
Um, so you can take on the certain colors of certain foods. Okay, Josie, another question. I have two questions, actually. One, okay. why does your pee smell whenever you eat asparagus? Ah, uh, why does your pee smell when you eat asparagus? Also, because of the um, the waste. There's a part of the asparagus that your body doesn't process really well, and it's something that is excreted in your pee. Ew. And so you also, smell that. Okay, never mind. Okay. All right. Any other questions? I do you have enough time for your worksheet or do you want to be homework? They want it to be homework. Weird. You guys will have all day, whatever. Uh, yeah, I have a question from the salt food. Zeke has a, a okay, question. Cool. Okay. So, um, salt is actually made out of two poisonous chemicals, like phosphorus and something else. But, and then another thing is, is are there actually yeah. vanilla beans or are they just kind of vanilla sticks? Vanilla actually looks like a stick. Well, yeah, it's a, they call it vanilla bean, and but vanilla naturally when it grows beans. looks like a stick. And they like scrape the stick to get the it vanilla. It's ruined for us salt for me. So, yes. Okay, so Zeke, what Zeke said is salt is actually made of two poisonous chemicals uh, or two things that your body can't naturally process otherwise. And that is true. But we will talk about that when we get to that chemical magic chapter that we'll have in a couple, like several months from now. Huh. Um, because we talk up about what things are made of. Um, and the different elements a little bit that they're made of. Um, we don't really get to talk about the periodic table, sorry. Um, that's next year, I think. Um, but, I, oh man, I wish I taught big kid science too. Gosh, I get so deep out about science, guys. Um, of course you do. Of course I do, because it's awesome, right? Uh -huh. um, anyways, uh, so certain things are poisonous on their own, but when they combine, they turn into an altogether new thing that is not for instance, I mean, and think about this like in a very basic way, when we make pancakes, we would never just eat um, flour. In fact, your body can't process straight flour. You should never just eat dry flour. It would make you very, very sick. Um, but when I put it with milk and eggs, it turns into a yummy, delicious pancake. I can't separate. And once I make a pancake, it's a new thing, right? Can I take it apart and make it milk and um, butter and flour again? No, it creates something brand new. And that's kind of the same thing with salt, Zeke. Those different chemicals combine on their own. We can't have either of them, but when we combine them, they turn into a brand new thing that we can have. Oh, yeah. And okay. another thing is, you, like, you can't, you can't, like, so butter, you, if you melt it, you can, like, get it back to, like, a solid. But you can't under it on the front of the No. Okay, Josie. Oh, okay. so how does your body process blood? That's in the circulatory system. That was what kind of we talked about the other day. So like how does it no, how does it like, if like you, create if you like eat if your tooth uh, falls out and then you like swallow your blood, does it just go into your system and goes into that, or does it um, do? How does your body like oh. the blood? Okay, so you, you actually digest some blood because that does happen. Like you can have injuries in your mouth or whatever, and get blood in your mouth. That happens. Um, yeah, I think your body just breaks it down into like its components, and then um, and it doesn't it doesn't just be like magically go from your stomach. So there's not a way for it to go from your stomach and esophagus into your veins, which is where we the blood like it is supposed to be. So guys, this was a good question. I hope you're listening. Uh, so Josie's like, what happens if you accidentally swallow some blood? We've all lost a tooth. Sometimes they bleed. You have a little bit of blood in your mouth. Sometimes blood gets swallowed. Or you get hit in the face or have a sports injury. Sometimes you you can swallow blood. Now, if you were to just, like, drink blood, gross, bad. Don't do that. You're not a vampire. Don't do it. Um, it's, it has a very metallic taste to it. Um, but... Josie said, does it just go back into your system and start circulating its blood? No, it does not. 
because there's not a way for it to go because your digestive system is not connected to your circulatory system in that way. Um, so it's going to have to go through your esophagus into your stomach. It's going to get broken apart. Now, your body can and, and constantly is creating new blood that circulates through the system um, and constantly replenishing. Because if you think about this, um, everybody's fallen and scraped their arms, scraped their knees. Some of you have had worse injuries where you've lost a fair amount of blood, right? Um, like a bad cut um, or whatever. Or think about this, like people that are in like car accidents and they have like horrible cuts or something and they're losing a ton of blood or whatever. Your body has to have a set amount of blood to circulate to survive. So if you don't have enough blood, why are you guys yelling and interrupting? If you don't have enough blood, you bleed out. It's called bleeding out, and your body can't process. And so sometimes you'll be like in the hospital; they'll give you like extra blood, and they'll have like blood coming in you, blood transfusion or whatever, and they give you extra blood. Um, that's to help your body because your body can make new blood to help the process. Because think about this: you're a little kid, you fall down, you scrape your knee, you might scrape it pretty bad, and it like bleeds and drips down your leg. You've lost some blood. Your body can recover from that amount of blood loss. You lose a tooth and you bleed a little bit. Your body can recover from that amount of blood loss all on its own. You don't have to go to the hospital and get a blood transfusion and get hooked up to an IV or anything for that. Your body will replenish its own blood, but it takes a while. Don't ask me how it does that. That is like another part of the circulatory system that I cannot speak knowledgeably about. But now, your worksheet just became homework, and so I'm going to staple it to your homework packet for the week, and you're going to have to take your science books home. Okay. okay. Um, for you guys. Um, I still have like 3,000 hands raised in recess in five minutes. That's fine. We'll keep going because I like all these questions. Josie. Okay, so how, what does it do with the blood if you have like a brain bleed? Good question. Um, my brother and my daughter have both had brain bleeds. So, um, so that's kind of like, um, so if you have a brain bleed, you're bleeding, but it's inside, staying inside your body. Okay. So you're bleeding inside your body. That blood does get reabsorbed somehow back into your system. Um, yeah, one time, and you can also have like your internal organs in your stomach bleed internally too. Like, again, car accident or sports injury or something, you can have bleeding internally. Say somebody like tackles somebody and hits them just right. Um, yes. And their liver gets damaged and is bleeding or something. You can have bleeding internally in your brain or your lung, any of your internal organs, and your brain is one of those, can be injured and bleed. Um, again, they need that certain amount of blood to function. So your organs bleeding is a bigger deal because they don't clot. Like if you scrape or cut your arm, it's going to scab up and you're going to get that clot, right? And it's not just going to continue to bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed. Inside your organs, they don't clot like the outside of your body on your skin does. So it's a greater risk for you to continue bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. And so a lot of times those kinds of things have to be handled at the doctor, in a hospital, with a surgeon or something like that. Because they've got to go in and actually force it to stop bleeding and sew it shut. Um, but that extra blood that's just inside your body, your body does reabsorb it. Um, how? I don't know. That's a higher level of circulatory system that I don't know about. Um, okay, so many hands. Riley. Okay, so is it true, because my grandma tells me, like, the more you eat carrots, the, like, your eyes become more blue? Like, you can carrots are, have a, uh, a nutrient. I want to say it's vitamin K that carrots are high in, and they vitamin K is especially good for eyesight. So carrots are something that are actually good for eyesight because of, they are high in, like, I want to say it's vitamin K. No, um, it's not vitamin K. You don't think? Yeah, I think it's vitamin K. Bananas are really high in potassium. Yeah. I know that. I, oh, I, I could have swore that carrots is vitamin K. Hang on. Oh, yeah, yes, it is. Because I thought it was vitamin D. Vitamin D is milk, but it's artificially added. Vitamin D you have to get naturally from the sun. That I know. Um, Miss Bab has a nutrition minor, so I, I know some of this stuff. Like, uh, yeah, but what? when I went to school, I and my the main thing I studied was music, but I also studied nutrition. Random, wow. random. I also had a ton of classes on nutrition. Okay, Maggie. Um, you know how my brother burns his legs? Um, yeah. I don't know, like, how did the blood transfer from his legs to his 
blows his leg and like he burns like the because your veins weren't broken his veins weren't broken his bones like oh so like your veins are deeper than your skin so it's like you have he got a four three degree burn and he had to get skin grafted yeah so if you get burned deep enough it does burn your veins up and but that skin is already dead because it got burned too but i believe like your ooh, do your veins regenerate like your skin does that's a good question i don't know if your veins regenerate like your skin does i think he like, can't feel like where he burns like he that's feels. nerves that's a different thing that's our nervous system and we haven't got to that yet <laughs> um she was talking about like when her brother got burned would his like the blood that was in that area did it burn up yes probably lily i have two questions she has two like how some people bailed on us they are all done with science they are done no, they went to do their worksheet they don't care anymore okay how we were talking about um, like i have recess duty we have to go outside marshmallows and gummies let's go yeah um, stop like, sean and there's bones in it what if you lose a tooth isn't that kind of a bone this bone isn't what is it what is a tooth made of good question Keratin. let's throw that it's not a bone Okay. Your hair is keratin. Your nails are keratin. Um, we can look up what our teeth made of. Hang on. Carrots. Hi, and carrots are high in vitamin A, as well as vitamin K and beta carotene. Okay. Um, and what are teeth made of? Okay, let me just. What are teeth made of? So weird. Okay. They're made of four different types of tissue. Pulp, dentin, enamel, and cementum. Whatever that is. Enamel. Okay. Um, not that I want to tell you guys I can't answer your questions, but I have recess duty. And I am supposed to be outside right now. Um so, do you have a quick question, Josie? Because I'm going to have to hang up here, babe. Okay. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. For blood clots, um, whenever you have a blood clot, like my grandma had a really bad one and was in the hospital for a long time. So, what I know that there's just like a blood clotted up, but where does your body have enough blood for the rest of it? because a bunch of blood is there? It does. The amount of blood that's usually in a blood clot is not enough to like deplete the rest of your body. And it's still in your body. It's just blocking other blood from continuing to circulate. It's just like a piece of blood for whatever reason that got a little bit too thick with whatever blood is made of. And it got too thick and it kind of got stuck for whatever reason. And so now none of the other blood can get past. And so it's kind of like, kind of like a beaver dam or whatever. Like it just starts building up and building up and building up. Um, and so blood clots can be pretty bad because then the blood can't circulate. So the things that like, so say I have a blood clot right here. Now no blood can get down to the rest of my arm. So that's when it gets dangerous because now this part of my body is not getting enough blood because the clot is blocking it from getting there. So that's why they like doctors sometimes have to like, the first line of defense is they can give you a medicine that thins your blood and makes it thinner. Um, and so hopefully it starts flowing on its own. But if that doesn't work, then they have to go in like surgically and remove the blood clot. Yeah. Yeah, she takes blood thinners. That's a surprising amount of medical knowledge that I didn't even realize I had until we had this conversation today. Um, I have watched too much Grey's Anatomy is what I've heard. <laughs> yeah. huh? It's like a medical drama TV show. Okay, I have to go. I got to go do recess duty. I love you guys. Um, do your worksheet. Okay, bye. Bye.